I had to bring a gift for my buddy. Yeah. So, you ever imagine what it feels like to drive in a car full of 60 gallons of horse poo in a hot day? Well, I could tell you. <laughs> the tour of my friend's backyard and his garden and his little mini orchard so he created this border along the fence and we'll start off here and work our way around but he planted these grapes from just little starts just little um, pieces of grape that he got from a family I believe these are black uh, Welch's grapes or purple Welch's grapes three-year-old grapevines and you can see it was showing me earlier oh yeah right here it's gonna get grapes this year but he's got quite a few plants here I think he's got four vines right here and we'll keep going down the fence line border here we have a pomegranate tree of some sort I would have to ask him I don't know what species or what type this is but it's doing very well very well more grapes back here another grape All right, and something that's very important to all gardeners is this giant composter. As a matter of fact, he offered it to me and I turned it down and I'm sad that I did. But yeah, look at this thing. It's got a handle crank and it just moves around. Yep, very nice, very nice compost tumbler. So very nice. A couple raised bed gardens in here. All right, he's got strawberries here. Peppers over here. There'll be some tomatoes that are gonna go in this section. Peas right there. Some dill, which he explains to me is very popular in, with his culture. And I kinda need him to follow me around because I want his to be able to identify these trees because he's taken off now. But. So up front here, we've got Mandarin. That's, I think it's a, uh, I'm not sure. And we got a Kyushu Mandarin here. And that one down at the end is the same as this one, which I want to say, I don't know which one it is. We'll get to that. More citrus here. Had a tough winter on his citrus trees. And another one here. Here we got a May Pride peach tree. It's producing very well. And I believe he told me that he went through here and thinned it out a little bit as well so there wouldn't be so many peaches on it. So that's doing well. Another citrus. Another citrus. We have a fig tree. It's another citrus over here. See if we can't see what this one is. Gold Nugget. That's right. Gold Nugget Mandarin. Check that out. 
All right. Another peach tree back here behind the composter. This is an O. Henry peach. And I forgot what this is. I forgot what he told me. Starfruit tree. For Northern California, this starfruit tree is doing pretty amazing. They do not like the winter at all. But pretty decent size. It's coming back just nicely this spring, so it should be just fine. This is the Brazilian uh, grape. I forget the actual proper name for it. But it's a Brazilian grape, the one that gets those purple fruits that grow along the bark. I think this is some kind of a guava, I believe. This is a lychee, right? lychee tree. It's also one that doesn't do very well in the winter, but it's doing just fine in his garden. This is a donut peach, I believe. Yeah donut peach and I'm about six foot tall that's about right here so this is a seven eight foot tree it's doing really good this is a forget what kind of peach he said I've never seen this one before strawberry free white peach that's what this is again this is at least six foot tall tree here as well and this is by far the hardest hit citrus tree that he has and you can see that the branches have just all died back some of them have turned black it's still kind of soft so not sure if this is diseased or just from stress from the winter and the water content in the ground not exactly sure but if you know what's ailing this tree something specific that would be great if you could post that in the comments if you recognize anything that's wrong with this tree but uh, other than that, it's probably just the stress from the winter and the heavy water load in the soil. I showed you the fig already. Here's another pomegranate tree here. Another fig tree here. We got some tomato starts down there for his garden. Raised bed, so there's more raised bed gardens here. Those are tomatoes that he has growing over there. And that looks like maybe a cucumber or some sort of a melon, right? More grapes along the back fence. Some are red, some are green. More grapes here. Tomatoes in this raised bed as well. Strawberries in this raised bed. And then Asian pear tree. Again, this is nine foot Asian pear tree. Very nice. This one looks really good. I mean, really nice. I have one in my yard and it is not doing that well. And then blueberries many blueberries different varieties but these are just these are doing just fine so one blueberry there two three four five yeah look at those blueberries very nice six things are just all loaded with blueberries look at that Seven, eight, nine, at least nine blueberry bushes around his chicken coop. Now, I think he's got, I believe, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think there's eight, seven or eight birds in here. And you should check your local ordinance. You live in towns, a lot of places will allow you to have backyard chickens. Can't have a rooster most likely, but you can have four or five or six hens, whatever they give you the allotment for. But this, when he moved in, I think was a dog pen and he just converted it into his little chicken area. So he gets fresh eggs every morning and if he ever wanted to, he could butcher one of those up and have it for dinner. And then on the other side of the coop, we have another tree, which is a Blenheim apricot. And this tree is doing well. This is 12, 13 foot tree. It's also got lots of apricots on it. Yep. 
I gave him those Barbados cherry trees. Look. He let them die. The green onions, possibly. Let's go inside and take a look at this chicken coop. Now, this chicken coop he made from just free materials. The materials he had around his house. The ramp is made from a pallet. And then you can just see the random board sizes right there along the frame. But it does the job. It does just fine. He's got access to the lane box from the outside right there. He's using leaves from last year for the bedding on the inside. And then I brought him some straw that he's using inside the nesting boxes. The chickens also have roost inside, shelter from the rain, the cold weather, and underneath, shelter from the sun. It's a perfect little area. So as you can see, in his backyard, he's got plenty of garden space, plenty of fruit trees, fresh eggs, lots of stuff going on in this backyard. And he hasn't sacrificed you know, uh, things that his wife wants and his child wants. You can see, look, there's a trampoline. I think a tree died in that area and they threw a trampoline in there. So, and then he's got a decent amount of grass space and the patio. So you don't have to sacrifice your yard or your lifestyle to be, to be providing for yourself. And as these trees get bigger and larger and start producing more fruit, He'll have plenty for himself, his family, and, and friends. So yeah, I just wanted to recap. This is Jabba Jacaba. So, Jabba Jacaba. <laughs> this is a great looking tree. White Mexican guava. White Mexican guava. Star fruit. Star fruit. <laughs> he hates it when I make fun of his accent. Star fruit. Lychee. Lychee or lychee. And white sapote. White sapote. Say that again. Louder. Isabel. I know it's because we're in America. Jeez. Oi. Anyways, white sapote. White sapote. Okay. Very good. Uh-oh, somebody's busy. Sorry to disturb you. Look at that. Fresh eggs. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, girl. All right, all right, I'll let you get back to business. So if you do live in town, yeah, they do make some noise, so know your neighbors. They're not as loud as roosters, but they will let you know when they lay an egg. Huh. Now, sometimes in town, you might have a problem with, with pests, especially getting into your chicken food, but this guy got really creative and he made this cage out of hardware cloth. And he just puts it over his food container at night to keep the mice and or rats out of his chicken food. He keeps it clean and fresh and it's not a waste of food. And then, so it's all nice and good. In the morning, you just remove it and the chickens get right back at it. Ah oh yes, the sounds of the city. You hear that car horn? I forgot what that sounds like living out in the country. So anyways, I brought him 60 gallons of horse manure from my property and by having the chickens and a good friend like me to bring him the horse manure and using the mulch the back to Eden style of garden, he doesn't need to fertilize this at all. With those three things, it's good to go. It's very low cost, it's very cost effective. The wood chips you can get for free, as you know. Um, he gets the uh, manure from me for free and the chickens provide multiple things. They provide the, the chicken poo, they provide eggs and meat in case you needed to. So there you have it. All in this one food foresty urban backyard. 
Mm-hmm. So you can see this mulch is just full of life. This is the back to Eden style gardening and it works really well with fruit trees. It's not so great when it comes to raised bed gardens and gardening, but uh, fruit trees really love this mulch and it just has plenty of beneficial bacteria and life. Look at all the worms right there. Look at them. So yeah. So let me turn around here and you can see the level here. So all this, this mulch was up to here. It's decomposed. It was almost to the top. So it's decomposed four or five inches just over a one year period. And how much, how many truckloads or how much mulch was this? Almost two trucks. Two truckloads to cover this whole area. So this whole entire food forest area with the tree is all mulched. So I had to come out here into the front yard because I wanted to show you this tree. This is a loquat. This is my favorite tree on his property. As a matter of fact, I tease him about stealing it coming to his yard and because it's in the front and stealing it all the time. But uh, yeah, he gave me two of these. I have them at the house, but they're really small still. As you can see, there's plenty of fruit on this tree. It's doing fairly well. But yeah, this tree is probably, I don't know, 11, 12 feet tall. It's pretty wide. It's a gorgeous tree. And while we're out here, we can just sneak in a couple of the other trees. We got a fig out here in the front and two citrus trees. So, so if I'm counting right, there is 23 fruit trees in this backyard, five raised bed gardens, a chicken coop, a chicken run, a composter. There's at least five, six, seven, 12 grape vines eight blueberry bushes and a partridge in a pear tree. There's quite a bit in this backyard. So like I was saying before, you know, get out there and do something. Become more self-sufficient, less reliant on others and the government and whoever else and provide for yourself in case of emergency or just because as the prices these days skyrocket in the grocery stores you'll be surprised at how much you can provide for yourself and your family. And it doesn't have to be like some crazy prepper where they turn their whole house into a garden or anything else. Not to mention there's, is it four? There's four more trees in the front yard. There's a loquat, two oranges, and a fig tree out in the front yard as well. So, and if I didn't mention it before, everything that you see here was in his previous property on a patio, in the patio area, something along the lines of that. He had them all in pots in a patio for like two, three years before he moved to this property and put them in the ground. So even if you live in an apartment, a small house where your neighbor's right next door to you and you don't have a lot of room, anything is possible. Uh, I'm happy to show you this yard today to show you what's possible living in town and what he did before, which unfortunately he doesn't have any photos, by doing it on the patio. So no matter where you live, you can still get it done. So just get out there and do it. And along those lines, something else I forgot to mention, he still has plenty of room. He's got a whole side yard over there, his room here. He could put other things out here. He could also do rabbits if he wanted to, get a little rabbit hutch, put it up against the fence over there. If he was into, you know, rabbit meat or things like that. Quails are an option in town. And there's just a whole different variety of fruit trees and things that he could do. So, you know, something in a more shady area, he could put some a spice garden over there for herbs and things like that. So definitely, definitely don't be discouraged about where you live, where you're at. I just want to encourage you to become more self-sufficient. So I'm happy to bring this backyard and show it to you guys today. I hope it inspires you to do something in your own backyard or your patios. Um, I felt like I needed to show you something other than my property on being on such large acreage and just show you what's possible. This guy on this property has almost as much as I have on my five acres besides the livestock. So there you have it. So, so we're going to come side. back in a couple of weeks to get a better look at this 
tree because it's just starting to bloom. See here? Yeah, lots of blooms coming out on this tree after the harsh winter. So we'll come back in a couple of weeks and take a look at this uh, backyard food forest and see how well everything is producing.